Welcome into the latest edition of Extra Time. Thank you for your tweets, Craig Burley and Frank LaBeouf with me. Before we get to your questions, Craig, how are you? How is quarantine treating you? Golf, I imagine, keeping you sane? I'm not off the bench today, Extra Time, so, uh, you know, I was penciled in to do this, so I've not been uh, taking... The, the subs board hasn't come up for me yet, but yeah, yeah, just I'm, I'm, I'm adhering to all the guidelines, Daniel. You know me, I'm a stickler for the rules. And uh, so I'm yes. just, I'm, I'm, and anyway, who doesn't want to social distance from Stevie Nichol? I mean, that's a given anyway, isn't it? <laughs> that's very true. Frank, how are you in Paris? Because you've been doing this longer than most. Yes, we have been stuck in my house for like a month now and um, it's fine, you know, I finished my third book, I'm starting the fourth one tonight and, uh, and I, watched, uh, I watched many uh, TV shows, I have to say, and, uh, and we share some good times with my, uh, with my wife, uh, we talk a lot, like uh, we've never been talking, <laughs> so it's a good point. <laughs> oh. Boy. I imagine she's been listening a lot, uh, Frank. Right, <laughs> Beckham Barrow or Maldini, No, no, Frank? she's bored. She doesn't listen to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> right, listen to me then. Beckham Barrow or Maldini? Oh, definitely Beckham Barrow. Because the first World Cup that I remember is the one in 74. I was six years old and, uh, and Beckham Barrow was first a midfielder and then drop back to to become uh, one of the biggest or is maybe the biggest sweeper that i ever seen and uh, it was so elegant so powerful so efficient uh, maldini has a fantastic career but he's more a left back than a central defender and um, and franz beckenbauer is for me um, the idol that i have to be i have to say that my father wanted to call me friends uh, friends, like Beckenbauer, not like the friends, the country, friends. And uh, my mother said, no, no way, no way. So it became Frank, like in an American way. But there is a little bit of, of Frank, friends Beckenbauer in me, I guess. A little bit, really. Who have you got, Craig? That doesn't quite, I don't think that was going to work. Was it Franz LeBeouf? I think that's not, not going to work, is it? <laughs> <laughs> no, for uh, sure I not. No, I didn't see... Uh, I, didn't, I never saw Beckenbauer play, obviously. I saw Maldini play, but uh, all right. Difficult one, really. Can I give you my, can I give you my standard response, Dan? Uh, no. Uh, who would be a better manager between Frank and Craig, Frank? Oh, me. Me. I'm, I've got a better temperament. <laughs> <laughs> True. True. I'm, 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 um, I'm having a hard time with the new generation. Um, psychologically talking, you know, I'm not sure that I will uh, be able to, to cope with the situation. So I will say Craig. <laughs> too. I tell you, I've had this conversation with Nickel briefly, uh, Dan, and he reckons I, I couldn't, he reckons I wouldn't be able to, I said to him I'd change. I understand, because you know, like, you know, you've got to deal with a lot of people, a lot of players, and, uh, you know, you got to be, have a little bit of come and go. He said, <laughs> he said I don't have enough come and go with people and players, so, but I, I reckon, I'm not saying I, you know, I'm saying I would be great at it, but you'd, I would definitely, you know, change my outlook a little bit when you're having to deal with people. But I, I agree with Frank. I think try to do it, try to do it these days is is a lot more difficult, particularly with the money around and the egos of players. These guys, particularly at the top level, have have a way more power than they had, uh, particularly 25, 30 years ago. Frank, why were Chelsea such a good cup team this season during Frank's time? Oh, no, sorry. Let me do that again. Why were Chelsea such a good team during Frank's time at the club? Uh, we, I think there was a mix of, um, of players coming from Europe, and that was pretty new because it was the Bosman law who, uh, who allowed us to, uh, to come to, uh, to England. And, uh, and the British uh, players like Craig, like Dennis Wise, uh, uh, John, John Spencer and everything. So it was a mix and we, we, we came along together very well. And I think we wanted to show to the uh, British and to, to the English that we would be able to cope with the, the English football. And they were very nice to allowing us uh, being good and helping us uh, helping us out so I think the mix of those players allowed us to to be a very efficient um, the first year 
and the years after when we, we, we won three trophies in, uh, in 98. So that's why it was. So, um, and I know with Marcus, with Craig Burley, with Dennis Wise, with Dennis, um, uh, uh, Di Matteo, Zola, Viali, Di Petrescu. I mean, that was a hell of a team, really. Steve Clark, yeah. uh, that was fantastic. That was a very, very good team. And so it's not a surprise for me that we, we, we got many, many trophies. Of course, Chelsea, uh, Craig, that was a time where the FA Cup was a big, big deal. Yeah, you just try to shoehorn that FA Cup semi-final back pass in again. Is that what you're doing? I mean, that, you did it last week. Uh, <laughs> no, I do that. Is that you trying to shoehorn that in again? Just to go back to Frank's point, you know, uh, back at that point, we, Chelsea were a, a good side, they were an improving side, but they, they were not a side that was ready to challenge for the league over the course of 38, 40 games. Uh, so the cup was very, very important. I mean, we had the, you know, uh, cup final in '94 before Frank was there. Semi final again in '96. Um, semi final and final again in '97 after we beat Wimbledon at, at Highbury and then Middlesbrough in the cup final. So that was, you know, three semi finals in three or four years and, and two FA Cup finals. And to go back to the point, people think certainly the our foreign players, you know, Frank and, and the Italian boys and whatnot. We used to say, how important is this to you? And do you know what? It was it's just almost as important to them as it was to us because, you know, they'd grown up watching the FA Cup and the FA Cup final. And so it was hugely important to our foreign players and it meant a lot to them. You've only got to see some of the games, like that game I talk about at Highbury where uh, Zola scored that fantastic goal we got to the final. How important it was to the foreign players in particular because it was always important to the British players. And I think when we had that gel and had that mix, along with the good quality players we had, that's why Chelsea were a very good cup side back then. It's true that the only game that I could see... No, it's not Chelsea was, TV, uh, come on. My... <laughs> no, 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 it's about my childhood. I'm talking about all the foreign players. And I talked to Eric Cantona about that. We never talked about the Premier League. Uh, we couldn't see the, the games when, when, when we were young. But the FA Cup was the only game showed in France. And, uh, and uh, we, couldn't, we didn't want to miss that because that was a special English game. And so it's why the Cup meant a lot to, uh, to I guess, all foreign uh, players. What is the best goal you've ever scored, Frank? Uh, the best goal it was with, uh, with um, France um, in... Uh, in in 95, I think, and when we won 10 nil against Azerbaijan, and I scored with a volley, but the volley I made it with my right foot and behind my left foot, like a major, I know if you see, but in the air. So that was very, very uh, impressive from my point of view because I never thought I, could, I would be able to do that. But I think the most important goal that I scored and the most spectacular goal that I scored was against Leicester, 19th minute, when we won one nil, uh, the last minute, and we won one, yeah, it was, it was unbelievable, the stadium. I think was about to explode, so that was uh, that was pretty pretty impressive. Yeah. What is the worst refereeing decision you guys have ever seen? Let's start with you, Frank. Uh, that was um, <laughs> against Wimbledon the first year that I played for Chelsea. The first time that I played against Vinnie Jones and the Crazy Gang. Um, then uh, this called we lost four two, I think, at uh, at home, and uh, and uh, I tried to save the ball in, on the line, and I think it was Robbie Earl who jumped on me and headbutt me, but never touched the ball, and the ball went in. And the ref said that that was a goal. And I had a big bump in my head, and I showed to the ref, and uh, Vinnie Jones came to me and said, hey Frank, welcome to England. <laughs> that was the worst uh, referee decision, but the best quote from Vinnie Jones. <laughs> Craig, for you? Everyone that wasn't given when I appealed to a referee, that's always the worst decision for me, I'm telling you. Uh, I appeal for everything. Full referees. So, uh, uh, maybe Graham Paul giving the three yellow cards. That was pretty poor. What about Pete Walton? Oh, we can't forget Pete Walton <laughs> who came out and gave the imaginary yellow card because he left his yellow cards in the dressing rooms. I've seen loads, mate. Absolutely loads. It's, uh, I tell you what's a good one. Maybe it was back in because of the time it was. Watch a YouTube clip if you can of the, the tackle in the, the FA Cup final. Liverpool against Wimbledon back in the late 80s. Straight from the kickoff, Vinnie Jones, and know Frank touched on Vinnie Jones. Vinnie Jones absolutely mullered Steve McMahon, and I don't even think it was a yellow card. Uh, have, a, have a butchers at that if you get a chance. Final one, speaking of butchers, who was the biggest butcher you played with or against, Frank? 
Well, we named the one. I think uh, Vinnie Jones at the time, we, we, against me, was, he was getting tired, you know, he was getting old and getting tired, so he was always right. late, so he didn't touch anybody. But I would say Denis Wise. I remember that we had a friendly game against Milan at San Siro, and my former teammates, um, um, national teammate, uh, uh, Christophe Dugarry, came to, came to see me once during the game. He said, can you say to your captain to slow down and calm down? It's only a friendly game. I said, go to tell him yourself, you know, he doesn't understand what I say. He doesn't want to understand. He's like that. He killed everybody. It was a friendly game. Nice guy out of, out of the pitch, but uh, the hell in, uh, on the field. Do you know what he used to do? I think I've said this before, uh, Dan. It, it seems it seems petulant, and it is, but it annoys players. It's not when he when he went into a tackle with you. I mean, I never played against him; I only played with him. But I watched him do it. When he went into a tackle with people, I saw him do it to Nicky Butt in the Man United game. They would be on the floor, and he would pull. It sounds stupid, but he'd pull the hairs and and the other players' legs quite hard. And if you've ever heard that done to you, it's a little bit sore, but it's really bloody annoying. And he used to do things like that. He used to just annoy people and wind people up. He was dirty. I tell you, a guy who I wouldn't have wanted to play against was Mick Harford. I played with Mick Harford, a former striker at Chelsea. Mick was one of the hardest players that I ever came across, but an absolute gentleman off the field. And one guy, I don't know if Frank will remember this guy, he wasn't the dirtiest player I ever played with, but he was one of the craziest. He was a left-back called Steph, Stefan Mahe. He played for Rennes in France and he came to Celtic and he was a little bit or a lot crazy and he could put a tackle in as well. Stefan Mahe was a little mad. I know Do you him, remember him, Frank? And he was a good friend of mine. Yeah, yeah, he's a good friend of mine. In the, and it's true, he played for Auxerre before. And they came to, when I remember, when he went to Scotland. And he had adapted to, uh, to, the, to the game very, very well. But he was, he was a tough guy. But again, it's like some people, uh, when they are behind their, their, their how do you say, their, their wheel the, 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 in the car, um, they, 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 they get crazy. But they are the nicest people uh, on earth. And that's the case for Dennis Wise, and that was the case for Stefan Maé. But they, you couldn't bear, well, you couldn't uh, take care of them on the field because they, they lost their mind. Gentlemen, thank you very much. ESPN FC back on your screens tomorrow. Be sure to join us. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.